Yeah, sharing resources. Uh, you know, I welcome any of your clients to come see my nurses. Free in the community, walk in, no appointment, tell me a problem, I'll figure out how to help you. Uh, we're weak in collaborative care in a mental health training, so I'd like all my nurses trained in, um, you know, brief cognitive behavioral therapy so that as a point of contact when a client comes in that they can assess better and maybe say something that makes a difference. So they're not ever going to be therapists. I don't expect them to be therapists. But if they had a little bit of training, extra training in what therapists say that makes people feel better, I'd like my nurses to know about it. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what we're hoping to get out. Um, but, you know, sharing the resources, bring on the clients. We're, we're ready. We're ready to see you. Oh, come get a flu shot, by the way. We're between 5,000 flu shots and fought more. I don't think I answered the I question. I should have got him today. <laughs> I don't think I answered your question from before about what could no, we do better. <laughs> Um, one of the things, and it's not a direct result of CPIC, it's a direct result of being involved in the BRIGHT program, is that we've realized how effective CBT is, not only with people with depression, but a lot of different issues that folks have. So we're actually going to implement CBT as a standard part of our process, treatment process, throughout our agencies. Um, and we're getting ready to embark on the training process of all our staff um, the Bright Project was really great. It was very effective. The, the effects, the outcomes are phenomenal, but it was also all a, a research project that was paid for. So we don't have the money necessarily to do that. So one of the advantages to us, and I'll be real upfront about it, is if we can get some of the CBT training by being a part of this, that's a good thing for us. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of helps us go on with with expanding CBT as part of our standard operating procedure, which I think makes us more effective w with all the folks that we're dealing with. And um, I can't say no, I, I, we didn't really, and I'm not even sure if our results are on the on the flash drive. They probably will be at some point from the Bright Project. Okay, well maybe we can put that on there. But, but just to say that we're really looking at the folks who've who've gotten this intervention are doing way better. Um, and actually, the people who just go through substance abuse treatment do much better. But the people who go through substance abuse treatment with Bright do even better. And we're talking about three years. We've already, we're looking at four years down the line now for people. And it's just the results are phenomenal. I think Ken mentioned earlier today that you know people could look back five years and see that something I did five years ago is still having an impact, and we're seeing that now four years back, where individuals who've gone through the Bright Project three or four years ago, you know, are still clean and sober, are working, are not getting arrested, are uh, <clears throat> not using the emergency rooms. So there's all kinds of you know implications to this that are just amazing. Bright, Bright, the Bright Project works in substance abuse settings, Jim being the lead partner, and they use the exact same CBT materials that we use in CPIC. So the Bright Toolkit was developed by Jeannie Miranda, who you met today, and Kate Watkins. And Kate took that manual and got together with Jim, they partnered, and they developed Bright for substance abuse. And this is a program that got so many results that got Jim excited with working with us. And we hope that that's the program that will get all of you excited to work with us. Well, I, I think not only are the, the outcomes so exciting, but I think the real exciting part about this is that, that CBT is usually delivered by a, a therapist. Um, and what we did with Bright was we actually trained substance abuse counselors. These are not therapists. They're kind of common everyday alcohol and drug counselors. 
And we train them to do the CBT intervention with the manuals. We did provide them with clinical supervision. But um, we're seeing these phenomenal results from folks that we just trained, you know, right right off the street, so to speak. So that that's kind of what we're looking at with this project is we're going to be able to train people who ordinarily wouldn't get this kind of training who, unless they're, you know, in – postgraduate school or, or in a master's program somewhere. So we could theoretically train people who, you know, who don't have those qualifications, but they could deliver the bright intervention. So that's one of the really exciting things about it, I think. Well, I think it relates to that public education piece that people have been talking about that, you know, when Jeannie said that she had clients who didn't even know they were depressed, they said all their friends are like that, their community's like that, that, uh, so I think the public education piece of distributing all these, go give a presentation on depression, let's, you know, let's get the word out there that, and I think that I think we are able, we're getting better able to talk about it. It's a very sensitive, delicate topic, um, but um, I think that uh, it's the public education that will matter. And it it won't be the therapists or the professionals doing that. It'll, that'll be the case managers and the outreach workers who really distribute that message. You know the in a way that the community can hear. Uh, I've just noticed since I've been involved in this that I see about three TV commercials a day about depression. <laughs> um, yeah. And Yeah, exactly. But the point is that it's apparently enough of an issue for them to advertise for it. And the thing is, obviously, that's only available to a limited number of people. I mean, not everybody can is you know, able to get those kinds of medications. I don't think Abilify is one of the $4 <laughs> medications. Uh, but the fact, you know, that people are hearing about depression, now if they hear that there's some other alternatives to those things they're seeing on television, I know that there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on about depression. So it's, it's rising to the surface on a number of different levels. And, you know, this group is actually doing something directly about it and working together. So I think, you know, with the public knowledge that exists, with the training and the education that we can do by, by putting together these community collaborations that then have influence, you know, and impact on all the folks that they deal with. Because it's amazing, you know, just you may be talking about something completely different, but, you know, mention that you're a part of CPIC. Oh, yeah, what's that? Or somebody mentions to you, oh, yeah, my my dad's really, you know, suffering from depression. I don't know what to do. Oh, let me do that. Why don't you do this? Why don't you go over to this place or that place? So all of a sudden, all this stuff kind of starts to spread around the more that we all talk with each other. So I think that's part of it, too, is it's really rising to the surface. And I think w this is a very timely kind of intervention that we're doing here because – there are a lot of things being suggested, but very few of them have to do with the community coming together as a group and addressing this issue. <laughs>